Hi, welcome to Health and Social Care at Suffolk One. We are a large faculty. We currently have around 14 classes um, studying various options of health and social care. And we all have different backgrounds and specialisms that we uh, teach to. I'm Juliet Mansfield. I'm the Head of Curriculum for Health and Social Care and Beauty. And on the team, as you can see here, are Ashley, Sharon M, Michelle, Sarah, Emma, Chris, Dave and Sharon Hay. So what do we offer here? We have three choices in terms of your health and social care. We start off with a level two option, which is a year course and equivalent to three GCSEs. If you don't get the grades that you need to study a level three course, then you can do that and reset English and maths alongside it. And it gives you then enough to move on to a level three course um, in the future. You have five lessons per week um, and they're a mixture of exam units and coursework unit. After that, if you decide you um, want to progress to level three, you can, or it would be going on to an apprenticeship or employment, or you can study um, elsewhere. Your entry criteria, as it says there, is four GCSEs, three to nine grade, okay? But you do need to have a three in English language. You need all of that because you need to be able to cope with the level of coursework that's necessary. For the level three courses, we have two options. So we have one that's equivalent to 1A level, which is the extended certificate. And you would study that alongside other A-level subjects, such as psychology or sociology, maths or English, or, you know, photography, dance, drama, any other subjects. You have two lessons per week for that. Um, and again, we have exam units and coursework units. It runs over two years, and from that, with your other A-level um, results, you then progress to either university, apprenticeship, or employment. To come onto this course, you need six GCSEs, grade four to nine, including a grade four in English language. The level three extended diploma is again a two-year course, but it's equivalent to three A-levels, and all you would study is health and social care. And this includes a work placement practice as well, okay? You um, start off in year 12 with six lessons per week, and then in year 13, you have five lessons a week. And over the two years, we try and get at least three block weeks um, of placement in. Obviously, that's a bit different at the moment due to COVID, um, but we do try because it's a vocational course and it's really important that you get that work-based pl um, placement and practice. There are four exam units over the two years and nine coursework units, okay? Once you get to the end of that, you can progress to university, apprenticeship or employment. The entry for that course is five GCSEs, grade four to nine, and again, you need a grade four in English language. Okay, so looking a bit more in detail at the level two, we have 10 units over the year. Um, this is what we're currently studying. So the ones in the bluey green colour are mandatory and ones we have to do, and they include um, two exams that we run through, um, such as human lifespan, you know, communication. Uh, the ones in yellow um, are our optional units. Um, Non-examined assessment is uh, the new word for what coursework is. But again, we choose these, they're optional, and we have quite a range of um, units that we can choose from. And they are subject to change because depending on who's teaching it, what their specialism is, but also on the students that we have, if their career paths are um, in certain, going in certain directions, we can have a look to see if there's a better option of unit that we can put in that would help you. So yeah, these are the units that we offer in level two currently. If you haven't done BTEC before, whenever you do an exam or you do um, um, coursework, um, you get a grade for it and it's pass, merit and distinction. And they all amount to points and then you add them up over the year that gives you your very end grade mark. So for instance, you've um, done a communication assignment and you've got a level two pass in it. That would mean it's um, three, three times four points, and that would give you your end result for that 
unit, which would be 12 marks overall. And you do that every time you get a mark. So you can see from the bottom left, everyone here, that everyone's been filled in in terms of how many points they've got. They add them up over the year, and then that gives them the end result. So that learner got 180 points. And then you look at the points threshold on the right, and you see where it fits. Um, and it fits in between, it's a level two MP, okay? To move on to the level three course, though, you must get a level two MM. So this person would need to up their game a little bit more in terms of what they're achieving. So you really do need to be aiming to get merits in your coursework unit um, and above if you can, because it's proving that you will be able to cope with the jump to the level three work. We will also explain all this in detail when you're with us studying. So for level three, extended certificate and extended diploma, I'm just going to show you a little bit more about their um, options and units. And um, again, they have the point system the same as level two. Yellow is mandatory here, um, the green is optional. These are our year 12 units. The extended certificate only have four units over the two years. So theirs is a mixture in, in there. The extended diploma um, is what this, they study in the year 12. So everybody studies human lifespan development, working in health and social care, and meeting individual care and support needs, okay? Then there's a range of other um, options and units that we move and change about, okay? Unit 14, Physiological Disorders, that also will get studied in the second year for extended certificate. So it is a mixture of all the different units in terms um, for, for whether you're studying for 1A level or for 3A levels. Unit 6 at the moment is our work experience unit. Currently, um, it's moved to year 13 um, just because um, we're not going out on placement currently, but again, it could all be changed um, once we know what's happening a bit more and how things are settled due to COVID. In year 13, we do another exam of anatomy and physiology. We do a controlled assessment exam, which is inquiries into current research, and this really builds up on their skills. So if they're looking at going on to university, it really does help in terms of um, how to write and set things out, how to analyse sources, build all of that and future work with them, dissertations and, and things like that. Um, and then again, we have other optional units that we do have subject to change. We do move them about a little bit. If there are any questions so far, then please pop them in the chat to the right hand side where um, we will try and answer them um, at the very end of this presentation. So similarly to the level two, everything gets points. The difference here is for your exam units. You still get past merit and distinction, but there is a, a, a band that you can get points for. So you could get a low pass and a high pass. You can get um, between 12 and you know, 15 marks rather than just you know, a set 12 mark. The coursework, that's a distinct mark, and you just get one grade. But within the exam ones, there are um, a number of points within that range that you can get. And again, you end up with an end result. So for extended certificate, you can see that if at the end of the two years, they just got some passes, they would typically get a pass overall. But if they produced merits and distinction work, then the high likely is that they could come out with a really top grade, okay, of a distinction. Um, and I'll talk about the equivalency in a minute. Similarly, for the extended diploma, again, every unit is worth points. You add them up over the year, and you can see in the right hand side here, it equates to what their overall grade is. Most universities, they would like entry criteria to be, you know, DDM, DDD, you know, right up here, really, in the, in the higher grades. So you do need to make sure that when you're studying, that you don't just settle for passes. We will obviously, we teach the distinction, you know, so we would hope that you would always attempt to go for the distinction grades. So 
So these then overall marks equate to UCAS points. So if you want to go on to university, this is where it does help you. Obviously, if you have more questions and you're not sure, we can always answer them separately. You can always ring or you can contact through um, the web website and we'll always be able to help if we can. So you can see along the, the corner uh, the, the column here, extended certificate, if you got a, a D star, that's equivalent to your A stars in A level. Okay, and it's equivalent to 56 points. D, A, 48 points, and so on. Okay, the merit overall is equivalent to um, a C, but again, you can just sort of get into the bottom B area depending on how high your grades were um, for that. For the extended diploma, it comes up here. It's what you do is you it's sort of times how many um, A's or B's that you've got, and it comes out of that end result. And each university then will set its own entry criteria, and this will make more sense when I show you the next slide. Okay, so everything you get is equatable to tariff points here on the right. So just as a guideline so you can see what I'm talking about, is if you wanted to study social work at Anglia Ruskin, what they're asking for is equivalent to A-levels. They're asking for at least two A-levels, and the points they would want is 112. In other words, you would either have to get at least two A's to make that point up, or you would have to get B, B, C in your A-levels for those points. For the extended diploma, to get 112 points, you need to get DMM. University of Suffolk, though, they have a higher expectation. So for the same degree, they want you to have three A-levels and they want you to have at least BBB or equivalent, you know, an ABC. And they actually specify what subject they would like at least one of those to be in. So if you do want to go into university, my advice as well would be, I've put the website up here, www.ucas.com is have a look on there, search for um, undergraduate courses and start having a look at some of their entry criteria because it may help you to decide what kind of A-levels or what course you should choose because if you want to go to some of the top-end universities, you, know, you need to be thinking, what actually do they want me to study to do that course? Not everybody specifies um, a, a subject but I would hate for you to you know, start thinking about your future and realising that you can't study somewhere because you didn't know um, about studying a specific subject for that university. So please have a look at UCAS.com. Um, and again, here they're asking, as I said, for three Bs and what their points equate to, and they want for um, the BTEC Extended Diploma, you must have DDM. So, you know, you do have to study hard and you do have to aim for merits and distinctions in your units. For the extended diploma, there is a course cost. Currently, though, that's on hold. Um, we may ask for enrolment, um, but it may not be. The reason why we have a course cost is when we go out on um, um, work placement, you have to have a number of things to do that. One of them is you get the DBS check. You have a T-shirt that has um, stuff at one all over it. Um, so it's like a uniform that you wear when you're out there, so you're identifiable. You also have an introduction to first aid course and you have safeguarding training. So we do all of that. We get you what we call workplace ready before you even go out, um, out on placement. Um, if you are in receipt of any support, then there is a, support, then there is a bursary available, um, but you would need to contact the college for, for this um, so that you can pay for this in the future. As I've said, our current year 12s aren't going out, but they will do hopefully in year 13. Just another thing to talk about, the college day is very different from what you're doing in school. We only have two lessons per day. Um, each one is two and a half hours. So ones, you don't start till 9.30, finish at 12, and then start again at 1.15 to 3.45. 
we find that having longer sessions means we can really cover a big topic. We can or cover a whole criteria that we need to be writing up. And we can really delve into um, good discussions and have time to um, see everybody in the classroom that we need to. And it works. You do need to be aware for lunchtime, you can have it in the atrium here. We've got a cafe or you can visit the local shops and area. So you don't have to stay on site um, when it is lunchtime. So what we have also did was we spoke to some of our current students and we've asked them to produce a little video, talk about their experiences here at one and out at placement. I went on placement in the college with the FL students. The highlight of my work experience was um, being able to work with a variety of different people from different backgrounds and different, with different disabilities. The thing I feel like I developed the most during work experience was my confidence in a different area. Um, I feel like my patience especially um, developed, like I'm now a lot more patient. My favourite things about the course are the people, um, you meet a lot of different types of people, people with different um, career choices. Um, I also like um, the certain units, well, certain units that we do. Um, I feel like um, anatomy and physiology is an important one to me because of my future career, but I also like learning about mental health. Which I feel like it's a very important unit. My career of choice is an operating department practitioner, which is a nurse in an operating room. And I'm very looking forward to going to university and studying it after this course. On placement, I went to Allied Health, a local physiotherapist. While I was at my work placement, I learned how physiotherapists work. My favourite thing so far has been learning about nutritional health and the type of foods that we should be eating, what's good for our body, stuff like that. I'm currently investigating my career options right now. For my two week placement, I went to Genesis All World Makeup. The thing I liked the most from my placement was how the service users communicated with the workers and how they communicated with the service users. The highlight of my placement was the people that I worked with, getting to know how they lived their lives and the activities they all did. My favourite things about the health and social care course here is the variety of subjects we do. Um, I really enjoy the environment that we're in and just how we get treated like adults and just how we can do the research and it's also I'm actually doing a subject I enjoy now because it will hopefully contribute to my future career. The unit I found the most interesting is Unit 1 as it teaches you all the basics and you get to know what health and social care is actually like. My career of choice is to become a paramedic and hopefully I will be going to Lincoln University in England. On placement I went to a primary school. On my placement I went to a primary school. I found it interesting how different people communicated with each other and my confidence grew a lot more. I found it interesting the relationships that the students have with their teachers. It was a really happy environment and I really enjoyed being there. Yeah. My favourite thing about the course was the people that we've met and how interesting the units are. Yeah, my favourite thing is that the teachers, there's no stupid questions. Like the teachers will help with literally anything. Yeah. My favourite unit was Unit 1, Human Lifespan. I enjoyed learning about it because I want to work for children when I leave and it seems really relatable. It was really interesting to know the different developments that children go through. I'm not sure what I want to do as a career but at the moment physiotherapy seems like a good choice that I want to work towards. I want to work with children and um, work with children that struggle to manage their behaviour is what I'm going towards at the moment. On my placement I went to Rose Hill Playgroup. On my placement, I went to Ravenswood Primary School. While I was on placement, I gained confidence and how to communicate with younger people. I'm the same here. 
On placement, I really enjoyed interacting with their children. And I enjoyed the positive atmosphere. My favourite thing about studying at Suffolk One is the fact that the teachers are really helpful and like, the environment is just a positive atmosphere. I like how the teachers respect us and treat us like adults. My favourite unit is the unit we're doing at the moment, which is unified by quality, diversity and discrimination. Yeah, me too. In the future, I'm looking forward to becoming a paramedic. In the future, I'm looking forward to become an adult nurse. On placement, I went to a preschool. I think I developed my confidence the most whilst I was there. The highlight of my placement would have had to have been working with the young children because they've got so much imagination and energy. I think one of my favourite things on the course has to be that it's related to what you want to do. It's like the human anatomy and that, that's very, very interesting. As a career I'd like to be a nurse.